Be seated. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, good morning. I pray that all of you are well and that members of your family are also in good health and that this coming week will be filled with not only good health and spiritual joy, but also an opportunity to share your faith with someone else. It seems to me that we live in a time that is wrought with anxiety. How often I hear of people being very anxious about everything, not just one or two or three things, but everything. Everything brings about some kind of anxious response. The insecurity that many people feel today is rampant. And so the readings for today perhaps will speak to us about how we should really focus more on the Lord and our relationship with him rather than on the world and our relationship with the world. St. Paul tells us in Romans this morning, he says, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that true? Because the peace that we should feel in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is based and is connected directly to our faith in him. And in a sense, it is also connected to the gospel passage. The eye is the lamp of the body, and so if your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. And yes, we know that the eye itself allows us to see, and it works with light. And when the eyes are not as well as they should be, they don't function in the way that they should function, then that kind of vision is either blurred or is darkened. But the Lord here is not speaking about our physical ability to see. He's speaking about the spiritual ability to see. The eye of the soul connected to discernment, connected directly to faith. And if our faith is strong, then there is very little, if at all, any darkness in our life. And so the peace that we feel, that St. Paul speaks about, is based upon that faith. The stronger that faith, the more light, the greater the peace, less anxiety. St. Paul continues, through him we have obtained access by faith to his grace. How wonderful. The grace of God is directly connected to faith. And if our faith is strong, then God's grace will also be strong with us. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. This is one of the most beautiful phrases in St. Paul's letters. Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. All of this connected directly to our faith in him. And St. Matthew in the Gospel continues in this same way, but with some different words. He says, if the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness, because we cannot serve two different masters. We cannot serve the Lord God and serve the world. Serving the world, in a sense, serving our own desires and our own needs, looking after ourselves as opposed to seeking what God has planned for us and listening to how he speaks to us every day 
and helps direct our path. It is not a robotic response to the Word of God. It is something that we freely accept and we desire to do what God wants us to do because we know that those things connected to God produce great peace and great love and above all, great hope. That is the hope that we received on the day of Pentecost. It is the hope that we continue to experience in these days following our own celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. Last week, we learned of the calling of the disciples, and we are all called to do what the disciples are called to do, to share our faith, to speak about God's love to those who come into our life. And then he says to us, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink, and about your body and what you shall put on it. Oh my gosh. This is all we do. We think about what we're going to eat. I'm in the same predicament as all of you. And I've decided that I have to eat less because I want to be healthier. And I have lost weight. But that doesn't mean that I stop thinking about what the next meal is going to be. And what I should wear? Well, my choice was made a long time ago. Black is in for me. Unless I'm wearing the garments of light, which every priest and every clergyman wears, not because this is what we want to wear, but this is what our Lord has directed through tradition that when we come to the church and we dress to participate in the divine liturgy, we place on ourselves the most wonderful and most beautiful clothing because we are in God's house. We are present with the saints. We are present with the Holy Spirit. And what house would we go to without thinking about what we're going to wear? and what we are going to bring. But in God's house, what we wear and what we bring is directly connected to our faith and His grace. Yes, the Lord takes care of many things, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. And if He takes care of those, and we really don't think about how the birds eat, or how the flowers grow. We know we like flowers and we want all of the birds. We listen to the birds. When we don't hear birds, we are concerned. Why do we not hear any birds? And very often, not hearing the birds speaks to us about perhaps there's something else happening. The weather has changed. Or they may sense something about the earth that is different. And the flowers of the field, sometimes they are prolific. And other times, they really don't come up as they did last year or the year before. And we become concerned about that. The Lord says to us, I will take care of those things. But they are not more important than you. Because I also consider you to be very important, and I will take care of you. Yes, we should be concerned about if we have enough to take care of our families. But then the question is, how much is enough? St. John Chrysostom tells us, if you have two coats, give one away to someone who has none. If we have enough food and clothing to care for our families, then all of the extra stuff, in a sense, is not needed. But how many of us have a coat for winter and a coat for spring and a jacket for summer and clothing for celebrations and clothing for Sunday and clothing for travel? How many of us put all of those things first in our life without even thinking about it? 
And yet we come to the church and we listen to what St. Paul and St. Matthew, guided and instructed by the Holy Spirit and our Lord, to think about this idea that God is real because we believe he is real. And if we believe that God is real, then we need to start listening to him more and stop listening to our voice concerned about what we shall eat and what we shall drink and what we shall wear less. I remember, Father Lee, in a blessed memory, you had a favorite phrase, less is more, most people don't know it. And I remember that from time to time, less is more. And most of us are really not aware of the less. We are also con we're always concerned about the more. But in these last several years, we have come to understand that we are really not in control of very much at all in our life. And if that is the case, if we recognize that, then we need to come closer to the Lord who does control everything and allows things to happen for a good reason. And sometimes he allows things to happen to wake us up, to help us reorganize our priorities, to take a different view of life, to develop what the fathers of the church and the saints of the church refer to as discernment, being able to know the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, especially when it comes to our own needs and our own desires. Is our faith in Jesus Christ greater than the desire that we have to accumulate more? Is the hope that we have in God more than the hope that we have in our own abilities? Is the character that we wish to develop greater than the character of the saints and the martyrs of the church who are willing to give their whole life because of their faith, who gave up everything? And as St. Paul questioned the Lord, we have given up everything for you. What will, what will we have? And the Lord says to him, you shall have the kingdom of heaven. So let us focus on that. For in the very last sentence of Matthew's gospel, for the Gentiles seek all these things, what we shall eat and what we shall drink and what we shall wear. And your heavenly Father knows your need, that you need all of them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Amen.